they definitely happen at least twice okay i do believe it can go up to four but two is the norm the norm for internships is probably one round of coding and then maybe two rounds of interview UMass again has a portal to connect to alumni working in different fields. It is definitely useful to start a conversation with them, uh, talk about the work you're doing and how it's relevant to the work their company is doing or they might be doing, and build up a rapport that can eventually lead to something else. In addition, uh, UMass has its own set of career services, but the computer science department has a dedicated staff for just this and they are extremely helpful, they are extremely good. They do everything from uh, giving you mock interviews to looking at your resume, to looking at your applications for you, going over it with you. Uh, they're very useful at connecting you with different people they know in the field. So being in touch with these services is also extremely beneficial. Other than that, I, I, I do think that uh, your next step would be maybe just reaching out to people similar to how you reached out to the alumni but on LinkedIn when you see open positions connecting with the people uh, talking to them about how, why you think you would be a good fit for this work environment or for this project or for this job. Anything from like $4,000 a month to 6000 or so. I would say 80% are definitely easily able to get their intern. If you do an internship at a smaller local company that does not have as high a demand of, of uh, employees, then maybe not necessarily. However, if it's a large corporation where they normally do have a large free flow of incoming new employees, then it's almost, it's quite likely that it would get it. They do happen at the same event, however, the information is very clearly posted on multiple channels uh, beforehand. So you know exactly which companies are coming, you know exactly what they're looking for. You know their positions, you know if they accept international students, you know if they're willing to uh, be your sponsor for a visa, you know if they want part-time or if they want full-time or if they want research positions or software engineering positions. The questions would probably be quite harder. So. Uh, if there's a book called Cracking the Coding Interview. So if you did, uh, I would recommend that by the time you apply for jobs, you at least go through it and are quite comfortable with what's in it. If you use things like Hacker Rank or Read Code to practice your, your programming, by the time you look for a job, you should probably move on to the medium or hard level rather than stay on the intermediate levels. Uh, but after the programming part, you would probably again have maybe two remote interviews uh, maybe another on-site at the end of the process. And in some cases, I have heard of a secondary programming round as well. I don't think it matters too much for the companies that are actually hiring. I don't think they place that high an emphasis on it, simply because once you, fin once you come up to the level of a master's program or a PhD program, it's almost like you're at a level playing field at that point from as much as maybe uh, 65,000 to maybe 130,000 per annum.